One, two, three. Sometimes you need a woman's touch. Hello, and welcome back to Kennedy the Sports Guys podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Sabero, and today I might have the most famous guest on this show. Joining the show today is three time All American, Hall of Fame soccer player, and current ESPN anchor, contributor, sideline reporter, Renee Washington. Miss Washington is an established entrepreneur, as in 2020, April of 2020, she launched Space by Design, an interior design company. Also, she launched Plants Not Buried, an empowerment program. Please welcome to the show, Renee Washington. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, Kenny, thank you for the great intro, and thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. So my first question I have is, how did your road towards a reporter get started? Ooh, um, well, I have, as you mentioned, a, a background as a player, you know, I started in sports as an athlete. And so after I had the opportunity to play some professional soccer, coach college soccer, um, I was, I was getting my master's coaching at Lehigh and, um, started making that transition because my undergrad degree was actually in public relations. Everything I was studying was more PR marketing focused. And so I realized later in my college career that, as I was like a junior or senior, I wanted to, to shift. Instead of being in PR, I wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to be in the conversation. I wanted to tell stories in a different way than, than PR. And so while I was at grad school during those two years and coaching, that's when I started making that transition, working with the Lehigh Sports Media Department, freelancing, writing, creating my own YouTube channel, creating my own website, and just started changing my you know daily work that I was doing to be more focused on reporting. So I uh, just slowly started creating my own, just like you, you're doing with your show and your work um, to pursue the, the career that I wanted in reporting. Yeah, actually, we, you and I have both similarities because uh, we create content and, you know, it's very interesting how things are in terms of like, you know, getting like content out there, promoting yourself, all that stuff. Yes, so- absolutely. So my second question is, how did you exactly join ESPN? Yeah, I mean, a lot of this industry is just about networking and building relationships and um, also being very um, motivated to just keep keep finding ways to create. And so I was, and especially in the beginning, but I've always been somebody that is always having multiple hustles. Like I rarely am doing just one thing. I always have a lot of other things going on. And so I remember in 2016, as I was working in local news, I was an MMJ, I was covering high school sports, I was doing news stories. And I also started working with this local station, um, hosting a daily show. And so um, I, through that, remember having a contact from Princeton University that reached out and was able to co- and contact me asking if if I would be open to covering their their soccer games and that was at Princeton just doing men's and women's soccer games and so then the Ivy League partnered with ESPN and started um, broadcasting through ESPN for their games and so my role went from just filling in doing a few soccer games with Princeton to covering all of not only Princeton sports, but also Ivy League sports and Temple and now Lafayette reaching out and other schools reaching out to me that I'm now able to um, connect with and able to now broadcast for ESPN. So it started years ago, and it did, but it did not start in the same way. And I think that's something that this industry has taught me, like you have to be open to just stepping your foot in the door because you never know what that would lead to. If I didn't take that opportunity for the show, which led to, you know, Princeton connecting me, which led to ESPN, which now I'm, I'm doing four and five ESPN games a week. Um, that all started where I was doing maybe four or five in the, in a, in the year. Um, so <laughs> it just, just being persistent and continuing to move forward. Like I said to a lot of people, persistency is key and will open a mm-hmm. lot of doors for you for that. Yes. So yeah. the next question is, um, what is your favorite part about working for ESPN? Um, I right now I think it's the fact that there are so many schools I get to work with and so many teams. You know, um, I I've worked in many different roles throughout the course of my career. I've been like a team reporter. I've worked with specific networks or specific leagues. But what I like about ESPN is the fact that 
no two games are the same. You know, I, I actually even started doing field hockey games. Um, so I do sideline reporting. I do color commentary. I've done play by play. I've covered every sport, soccer, basketball, football, swimming, lacrosse. And so I just enjoy the excitement. You know, I was just doing a women's soccer game um, yesterday, uh, Sunday evening. And to be able to see the excitement of the players as they win the game and they're like, oh, I get to be interviewed. You know, that's something that's needed for college athletes to have that professional experience and across all sports, not just the major sports. You know, I, I enjoy covering football and basketball as well, but okay, baseball, softball, bas uh, soccer, other sports too, that we're here, we're covering you. We want to interview you, we want to talk about you and highlight you. So definitely um, enjoy that versatility and the excitement that comes from um, being able to be on campuses. And even now I have a lot of students that reach out when I'm on campuses and they'll come up to me and say, hey, I see you're with ESPN. I want to do the same thing. Can I chat with you? So just being out at games and being in the environment around players and coaches and fans, you know, versus just being in like a studio or something virtual like I was doing in the pandemic um, mm -hmm. is definitely something that's that's very exciting and a lot of fun. Yeah, the pandemic was actually a lot harder on people and I've been noticing your work on you know IG I mean Instagram Twitter and I have to say you do a very very good job on it yeah thank you thank you <laughs> so let's move on to your uh entrepreneur career how did your entrepreneur career get started um it's actually something I've always done I remember even back in high school, I created like a charitable soccer tournament. Like I've always been very actively involved with giving back and with creating. And that's partly why I was influenced to go into um, public relations because I had a passion for like nonprofit work and building up, um, you know, business relationships and customer relations. And so I've always, I, I have many different passions. As you even mentioned, I have an interior design company um, that many people don't even know I have, but I have a lot of passion. In the in research. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It's it's there, but you just people just don't look and see it. Um, but, you, you know, it's just, you only have one life to live. And so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm tapping into as many things as I, as I can. And so for me, being able to actively um, pursue all and wear these different hats, I'm, I'm still relatively young, I'd like to think, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a space in my life where I have more time on my hands to, to try things, to see what door, which doors can open. Like I, obviously as a sports reporter, I'm hoping to go as far as I possibly can with that, but who knows where my career will take me. So I don't want to close any doors. I don't want to miss out on any opportunities. And so for me, plan to not bury it, especially was something that I could create that was an extension of myself that was more than me that was able to give back, that was able to help others, to create a, a space that I could provide a platform for people to have access to resources and networking and events and things like that. So I just wanted to be able to um, do something that was bigger than myself. And I always have, wanting to use my platform and my voice to, to be a part of something bigger than me. So why not tap into creating my own businesses and, and be able to provide something that I think has a need in, in our world? Yeah, your two companies right now basically has a need for the world, and I hope more and more people see that mm -hmm. within time, because um, your company is actually really, really good in terms of like mm -hmm. your um, mission statement, you trying to empower all women and men as well, and I feel that the world actually needs all that. Thank you, thank you. All right, enough about your career, and let's talk about the WNBA. So what are your thoughts on the WNBA this season? It's been exciting. You know, I've, I've been happy to be a part of it and have seen up close and personal just the growth that's happening. I think um, over the last few years, you definitely have seen the change in just the excitement around the WNBA, the coverage of it. Um, obviously, just even seeing how the WNBA finals have started with the Connecticut Sun and the Las Vegas Aces, the excitement around that and the way that fans have just been, um, you know, not only in attendance, but talking about it and engaging and tweeting and posting. Um, it's it's great. It's needed. And the league has a lot of special talents. I mean, even as we're saying um, and saying farewell to some players that are retiring, such as Sylvia Fowles and Sue Bird, you know, you look over the across the league, across the teams, it's special. And I think it's finally getting the notoriety that's needed, but there's still a lot more work to be done and growing the league in that sense. I feel that the WNBA is actually really good for the league. I mean, they celebrated 25 years and 
it's going to keep growing. They have a lot of star players in it. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of, like, you know, Hall of Fame players. And my favorite player actually was Becky Hammond growing up. And she used to play for the Liberty. And right now she's actually the coaching, the coach of the um, Las Vegas Aces. And Mm -hmm. I would love to see for this. I would love to see this league grow to the monolith that is the NBA as well. I mean, we got a lot of good players in there as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the league deserves to be honored just like any other sports league. And I think to me, um, we're slowly playing catch up. A lot of people forget the fact that the WNBA has only been in 26 seasons. The NBA has mm-hmm. been in 75. Um, w- f- female sports in general are behind yeah. and are playing catch up. Women in general are behind and playing catch up. And it doesn't happen overnight. As much as we talk about it, it doesn't happen overnight. The same thing with race, racial issues and mm-hmm. um, you know, socioeconomic issues. These things don't change overnight. It's built off, for, off of centuries and centuries and centuries of this gap and injustices. So for me as a minority in many ways, um, I see that. I understand that. It, yeah. And everyone says, well, just just do this. It's not a simple fix. It's going to take time. Yeah, and so it's take time. That's how that. it is. Exactly. I mean, you know, you're not you're not expected to change everything overnight. I mean, as a Latino right. growing up, um, I literally just struggled with certain aspects as well. And like I said, like it's gonna be change, it's gonna take changes to, you know, change the world. You know, it's gonna mm-hmm. take some time, but we will get there eventually. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So in, the next question I have is, who do you believe have the upper hand in the WNBA finals, the Sun or the Aces? Um, you know, these are two teams that are that are haven't won a title. Um, I think this is for both of them. And I remember talking to uh, John Cole Jones um, back in preseason and she was saying, I have of all the, the, the championship, I mean, of all the trophies and awards I have, I don't have the most important one, a championship. And so these are, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm thrilled for this. I love this matchup. It's two teams that are hungry. It's two teams that, that want to win, that have a lot of talent across their team, that have MVPs, defensive player of the year, you know, that have um, the, the best players in the league, but have not won that title. So I think that right now, just watching how game one went and how, um, tight it was I mean we've been seeing Chelsea Gray balling out we've been Mm -hmm. seeing you know just players stepping up in in big ways that's what this is all about and I don't know who's going to win I mean I I don't know I really don't know I think it's because I'm leaning towards the aces but I really I can't count out the Connecticut Sun at all this is a team that again I remember in preseason saying everything they were saying was championship focused we got to do this because we want to win a title you know like it, they they had their sights on this they were they were looking towards this and so to see them here and knowing that they are just a few games away from actually that being a reality um that's that's it's dangerous they've been in finals before uh so i don't know who's gonna win but i'm just loving all the great basketball that we've been seeing so far here's my thing i think the, I have the Aces winning because I think okay. Becky Lynch wants the title. I mean, Becky Lynch, oh my God. Beck, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm thinking of another Becky. <laughs> uh, Becky Hammond. Yeah. I think she deserves a title, and I think she's going to win. I think the Aces yeah. win in maybe four games. Oh, okay. okay. I got them in four games. So okay. the, so let's switch gears to the NFL. So there are plenty of NFL questions I have. So the first question I have is, what is the one thing you are looking forward to this season in the NFL? The Eagles obviously winning the NFC East and possibly <laughs> who knows how far in the NFC. Um, no, I, 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 I am an Eagles fan. So I'm always biasedly looking towards that and excitement there. Um, but I think I'd like to see this be a year of, of someone different stepping up. I feel like this is the time, like it's been, obviously a Tom Brady heavy league and even a Kansas city chiefs heavy league. I'm looking forward to this possibly being a year where maybe it's a new team. We obviously saw the Bengals last year, surprise many um, the chargers, the Bengals, you know, there's some, there's some younger teams mm-hmm. that, made, and even some teams that made some major off season moves, the bears that we've seen kind of middle of the pack, um, obviously not the Bengals because they made it to the Super Bowl, um, but be kind of middle <laughs> of the pack that I think are ready to take that next step. So I'm hoping this is the year we see like a breakout year for a team. Um, the Rams, obviously I expect to do well. Um, you know, there are some teams that I had high expectations for, but I think we're going to see some young quarterbacks, some young receivers that 
take that next step, which is why I include the Eagles in that conversation. So I'm ready for the changing, the passing of the guard, so to speak, and the change to be the, the next group of uh, young talent that's kind of running the league. I think the Eagles are actually going to win the NFC East. Um, a lot of people are saying that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jalen, I mean, Jalen Hurts, he's a good quarterback. Um, I think the Cowboys are not going to do well this season. Uh, they lost Dak Prescott for six to eight weeks now. Mm-hmm. He's going to have surgery on his uh, right thumb. Oof. Cowboys got a cowboy sometimes. Yep. Uh, That's but, why I don't, I don't count on them winning the NFC East. For that exact reason. But for me, I think I'm going to be interested in what Tom Brady does after the season. Because there are reports mm-hmm. out there that this might be it, his last season. And will he go out on top or he just go out, you know, out of the playoff loss? But it's going to be a good season. Um, I think the Eagles going to win the NFC East. I think the Giants actually are a pretty good team as well. They won last night. They beat the Titans, even though I think the Titans – actually lost that game more than the Giants won. Mm-hmm. But I, I wish I'll see how this year it's going to go because based on that steelers Bengals game last night, it was a really wild game. So I just think that we've seen a lot of major um, offseason changes and mm-hmm. uh, moves that just allow for a kind of shakeup, a little bit of a shakeup in the league. And yeah. I think that's what I'm excited about the most. I think the NBA went through that last year too. Mm-hmm. And I, I like when leagues have um, – we all like, I don't, I don't know about you, but I love a good underdog. Like I, I don't want it to be predictable. I don't want to go into a, exactly. a season and know, okay, it's probably going to be Tom Brady and whoever in the, in the Super Bowl. No, yeah, I, want yeah, it, yeah. I want it to be some suspense. I want some, like the bills are a team I'm expecting to take that next step too. Mm-hmm. This year. Like there are some teams that have been knocking on the door that I think have had the pieces that they've been building um, that are ready to be, you know, a comp, a division champ, make it far in the playoffs. And possibly even, you know, end up in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think that the Tom Brady aspect is going to be huge, too, to see how that plays out. My next question is, who do, who do you think is going to win NFL MVP? Oh. Oh. That's <laughs> Josh Allen. I'm going to, I'm going to, like, go with my first thought. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Josh Allen. Hmm, that's I, actually... Yeah, that's actually a really good pick, actually. Yeah, I see a lot the of people have... want him as MVP. Mm-hmm. I see the Bills having a really big year. And uh, honestly, he came back and is looking <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, um, yeah. His, his mobility, his size, his passing, his accuracy is for everything. Um, his agility, even. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. And I think especially coming off of last season's playoff loss, um, which was wild. I think that the Bills are are really kind of set up right now to be a front runner, in my opinion. I have them in the Super Bowl, to be honest. Mm. For me, I think I'm gonna say somebody that um nobody has really talked about, even though he had a really good year last season. John the Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts. I have heard, yeah. I think uh, he's gonna do well this season. I think that O line in Indy is actually gonna be really, really good even though they tied with the Texans for some reason. But but I got Jonathan Taylor as my NFL MVP, and you have Josh Allen as your NFL MVP. Okay. Pretty good picks, I believe. So. <laughs> All right, so yeah. this is the last question. So who are your Super Bowl picks? I have Rams and Bills, um, but we'll see. I don't know now. <laughs> I, wanted to put a, I wanted to put a younger team, um, like a younger team in there in that sense. But my initial thought, I, I feel like every season we get one rollover team, like the mm-hmm. Rams, are a rollover, they're a rollover team where they were already in that position last year as a top team and obviously winning a Super Bowl. Um, but I do still think they have enough talent to get back. I got They got to get some things fixed on the offensive end, but I do still think they, they are going to figure it out. Come so so for me, I think it's going to be the Bills and the Packers. Ooh. Yeah, I got them in the Super Bowl with the Bills winning – 35 to 31. Okay. I can see. I definitely feel like the Bills are primed to be a, in the Super Bowl um, and win it. And then mm-hmm. I, I don't know about the Packers. This might be the year they get over the hump, but I'm not really sure after after what I saw. I mean, it's only week one. Uh, yeah. He's going to, he's, Aaron Rodgers' season begins in week two, basically. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then that's all the questions I have for you for, t- for today. So I want to thank Ms. Renee Washington for the time. You can find this episode on KendaSports.com. 
and my YouTube channel, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. In addition, head on over to my social media pages on Twitter at Kenny underscore sports, Instagram at Kenny Sports Guy One, and TikTok at Kenny Sports Podcast. Until the next episode, see ya, and I hope you stay safe and healthy.